efforts have been failing all along. So we should dispassionately understand what went wrong, where are we wrong, why are we unable to reach out to them, where are we required, we have to change. And if we are able to change, and we are able to work out the chemistry of reaching out to all sections of society, then there can be a dramatic change, a significant change. The fact that today we don't have national support among various sections of people does not mean that tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or the day after the day after tomorrow we may not be able to reach out to nasty sections of people. The Latin American experience is telling us this. The experience of Alexis Tsipras or various other developments in Germany, a province in Germany is with the leftist forces now. Padoma, a, a, a new leftist group emerging in Spain, According to many reports, Spain is moving towards the experience of Greece. There, there is no reason in a country like India, we, the leftist forces, cannot emerge as an alternative. Here, I would record the fact with this 71 percentage vote. Now Narendra Modi has a majority of his soul. But just 30 years ago, in 1984, what was Bharatiya Janata Party? Can you recall? Can anybody help me? Hmm? Yeah, you know. In 1984, BJP had just two seats. And what is the percentage of vote? Now, BSP doesn't have even a single seat, but they, in Uttar Pradesh they have 20% vote. So some parties without having too many seats, they can have a substantial voting share. But what was BJP's voting share in 1984? 7.889. Leftist forces had more than that in many elections. 8 percent, 9 percent, and like that. So, a party which is against the interest of percents, workers, women, youth, and backward community, scheduled or scheduled like sections of society, the real mind of BJP is that of Chadu Varnia. They, three decades ago, they had only two Lok Sabha seats and 7.89% of votes. Through their own devious methods of communal organization and selling their politics as a product, packaging it in an attractive way, in a disruptive way, they have been able to achieve this structurist political goal of capturing power nationally. The leftist forces are genuinely the forces standing for the rights of the workers, peasants, agricultural laborers. The huge majority of Indian population. But in a way, we, the leftist forces, are concealing our real color and commitment to the sections of people who should have more this obvious business and agriculture level. Not deliberate, but accidentally we are unable to reach out to these sections of people and relate to them that we are for you. And until and unless you rally behind your own glasses and behind your own flag, how can we change the plight of your society? So, 
here. In Tamil Nadu, left care emerged as an alternative, like elsewhere. And in our country, the left care emerged as an alternative, provided we find the real reasons for our setbacks, our shortcomings. And once we are able to self-critically correct our mistakes and our own preparations, then I don't think any force can stop the emergence of the left forces as the alternate in Indian politics. Congress and BJP are two different sides of the same point. Congress is undemocratic. Their authoritarianism they have shown during emergency. They are anti-people, anti-working class, anti-peasant, which Congress rulers have shown through the economic policies they pursued. Now, few months of Narendra Modi has shown that the pro-rich economic policies which Congress pursued, Manmohan Singh pursued, Narendra Modi is capable of implementing the same anti-people economic policies more virulently. And so far as being undemocratic is concerned, the authoritarian way in which Narendra Modi is conducting himself has no parallel. Only Mrs. Gandhi during emergency behaved in a similar manner. Then the nature of BJP, which is already been mentioned earlier here, BJP is actually controlled by a semi-fascist, semi-fascist outfit, which is RSS. This is a semi-military outfit also. It's very dangerous. And there, Rajendra, due to the danger of war time, we are going to explain all those things. I don't go there, but we should remember that. So the danger that Narendra Modi poses is far more grave and indescribable because of the range of cases. So today, when we continue our struggle to strengthen the left forces and develop the left forces as, a, as an independent political force, we should have sufficient strength in, in parliamentary policy, politics as well as in working class present struggles and their capacity to intervene in national politics. Side by side, we have to devote our time and energy also to develop a broad platform to fight the communal semi-fascist danger being posed by RSS, Sankamariwa and like. And this responsibility we can address only by linking up such political struggles in defense of secularism and democracy with the fight against economic policies which permit maximization of profit for capital. These struggles have to be linked together. Narendra Modi government poses a three-dimensional threat to Indian society. Economic policy, anti-people, anti-working class, anti pro-rich, pro-multinational. Then, communal division of society, which is very dangerous. It has another dimension. When BJP is communalizing society, they are doing that, linking it with nationalism. That is more dangerous, communal nationalist concept. And also giving cultural dimensions to it. 
and that will encourage minority communism and minority terrorist activities also, minority extremist activities also. And they would feed each other, which is already happening within the country and in the world. Today we have read about the gruesome murder of a Japanese hostage by the Islamic State terrorist. So it's a huge danger within the country. So, authoritarian threats from Narendra Modi, communal polarization by Sakabriwa, and the people economic policies. And left has to emerge as an alternative. At the same time, trying to emerge as a massive political independent force within the country. So that various leftist forces would be able to influence the course of Indian political development. We have to parallelly work for developing a broad platform to resist the semi-fascist assault by Sakabariwa and emergence of various communal minority extremist forces and defense of the livelihood of people by fighting the wrong economic policies. Through these struggles and through self-criticism and self-correction within the Tamil Nadu and the country, they have emerge as a very powerful alternate force with this observation and apologizing to you for having taken some time more than what I told you.